The next uh, business is item number four, uh, uh, nomination of Taoiseach, and I will now receive motions. I move that Dáil Éireann nominate Deputy Bertie Ahern for appointment by the President to be Taoiseach. Over the last 10 years, Ireland has been transformed in many ways. The greatest part of this has been the overcoming of the historic challenges of conflict, unemployment and emigration. We have moved from being a, a nation defined by the problems it faced to one defined by the opportunities it has created. In this, Bertie Ahern has played an essential role. That his have been the two longest serving peacetime administrations in our history stands as a testament to his ability to lead. He has combined high office with a determination to stay close to the people who put him there. In an age where many people feel the need to read significance into almost every matter, he has brought a cool head and a consistent focus on moving our country forward. In the recent election, he did not seek a reward for past achievements, but a mandate to implement an ambitious and positive program to help keeping Ireland moving forward. The people responded to both Bertie Ahern and his message. There is no doubt that he is the people's choice for Taoiseach. It is my privilege to move the motion. This is a time when the nomination for Taoiseach most clearly reflects the wish of the people of this country who voted for Fianna Fáil in huge numbers. For the six Green Party TDs, and especially I wish, I, I wish to welcome warmly uh, Mary White, uh, Deputy Leader of this party, as a newly elected TD here today. Our support for the nomination of Bertie Hearn honours a decision taken by the membership of the Green Party throughout this island in a meeting in the Mansion House in Dublin last night. We are voting today not only for Bertie Ahern to be Taoiseach, but for the opportunity to play our full part in a government which will set this country on a course to be a leader in terms of quality of life standards, energy efficiency, renewable energy technology, good food production, equitable health care and good planning. I know this government will be a government that reflects to some extent the diversity which now characterises Irish society. And we in the Green Party have worked hard with our colleagues in Fianna Fáil to put together a comprehensive programme for government which urgently needs to be implemented. With that in mind, we are giving implementation of that programme a green light with this support for Bertie Hearn as Taoiseach. Uh, well, first of all, uh, Count Corla, I'd like to congratulate you on your uh, appointment as Count Corla, uh, and uh, it is indeed a great achievement, and I'm sure you will fulfil the duties uh, admirably. I would like to propose the name of Enda Kenny for the position of Taoiseach of this country. I think many voters in the recent general election voted for a complete change of government. Indeed, 25%, 25% more people voted for candidates who opposed the existing government than for candidates who supported the outgoing government. And for most of those voters, they didn't want to see the same battered vessel or the same tired crew put back onto the sea. They didn't want to see it patched up and put out with new bunting. They wanted to see a serious new change of government. And that is what Enda Kenny offers as Taoiseach. The past seven years have been a period of unique opportunity in Ireland. Extraordinary wealth was available to government to transform our community and the way we live and the way our people are served. And that opportunity has been allowed to slip by. It has not been properly harvested and many people have not seen the fruits of that success that has been created by so many people in this country. We should be looking back now on a period when we did indeed create a world-class health service, when we did indeed make it easier for 
families to bear the burdens that they have to bear. When we can look back on safer streets than we had seven years ago. But that is not the situation compared to the beginning of the millennium. And that's why we need far-reaching reform. And Enda Kenny, in Enda Kenny, we have a man who has made it possible for this doll to vote for a complete change of government. And that is a singular achievement. There are enough people who are not part of Fianna Fáil to create an alternative government. To elect a government that isn't another pastel shade of Fianna Fáil, but actually a government committed to serious reform across the length and breadth of public services. I propose a man who does not make promises to voters who he do, which he does not intend to honour when he is returned to government. I propose a man who has remoulded a defeated party some years ago and created the most vibrant force in Irish politics at present, who has won 20 seats in their last election, unlike any other party in the Dáil. I propose a man who has also built a platform for real change with Pat Rabbit and the Labour Party that offers the opportunity to transform so much in this country that needs change. We are embarking, as many have said, on more challenging times. And these are challenging times that the last government should have prepared us for. We should be in a stronger position to deal with competitiveness. We should be in a stronger position to deal with climate change. We should be in a stronger position to deliver quality public services to people who need them. But we're not. And that's why I think we need radical change. We need someone who leads by example. We need someone who stands up and sets high standards for himself and for all those around him. And that is what Enda Kenny brings. He is a unique leader for a new generation. A leader not in the old style leadership of the boss, but someone who motivates creates self-belief, creates a winning team, creates the sort of new and open Ireland that this country needs. And I believe he is a man who will lead a new type of government in Ireland, where voices that have been long ignored will be heard, where outcomes and not inputs will be the test of performance, where waste will not be rewarded with promotion, and where abuse of public office will be put finally and entirely behind us. I therefore propose Enda Kenny for the position of Taoiseach. Deputy Rabbit. <clears throat> well, uh, firstly, uh, Ken Corlia, uh, as somebody who doesn't intend to uh, have to take up the invitation to visit you in your office, uh, can I take the public opportunity of, uh, of wishing you every success uh, in the chair? Uh, I'm greatly encouraged by the remarks that you have made and I fully appreciate that your skills are probably no longer required in Kerry South given the extent of the booty on its way back to Kerry South. In the, back of, uh, in the back of Deputy Healy Ray's car. Um, I, I thought I heard you say when you said there would be a familiarization program uh, for the new members, I thought you were saying there would be a feminization program uh, for the new members. That might be something that we could, uh, we could look at uh, all uh, uh, cooperating in the introduction of for the next parliament. Cancolia, I want to uh, and it's a great pleasure for me to have the opportunity to support the nomination of Deputy Enda Kenny for the position of Taoiseach. Deputy Kenny is a man who is an immensely experienced parliamentarian. He is a man who is uh, immensely popular with his colleagues on all sides of this house. He is an honest politician. He is a man whose talents are well suited uh, to the job of managing uh, a government. And I hope, or I hoped in any event until recently, that he would be elected Taoiseach. Because he and I set out to offer the people a choice of government in the recent election. Uh, I fundamentally believe that it is important in a democracy that there be an alternative on offer uh, to the Irish people. And 
we set out uh, to create such an alternative because I think the Irish people have a right to expect that its democracy is capable of offering an alternative government. And we sought to do that. We sought to spell out on, on big issues confronting our people where we were different and where what we were offering was different. Uh, on issues like the management of the health services, on the private hospitals building program, uh, on criminal justice and policing, and on a number of other issues. Uh, the people are sovereign. Uh, the people made their decision. But I believe with conviction, and I say this with, uh, with the utmost respect uh, to my colleagues in the House uh, in, in Fianna Fáil, that it is not healthy in a democracy that a single party dominates uh, and is likely to dominate uh, uh, politics in the foreseeable future. Uh, I think that our civil society, uh, our institutions uh, need badly a change of government. That didn't happen. But I'm very proud here today to say that we fought the good fight. Uh, the outcome is narrow. The people are sovereign. Mr. Ahern has, uh, has won. Uh, I entirely accept that and we'll have the opportunity to make some remarks about that later. But I want to take this opportunity uh, to support the nomination of Deputy Inda Kenny for the position of Taoiseach. Thank you. Deputy O'Quillan. Gunnar Mahagat, Karen Corlea, and I wish again, as I said a short time ago, to wish you every success in your position as Count Corley and to confirm that my colleagues and I in the Sinn Féin party will cooperate with you uh, during the course of the Dáil term before us. There is a collective responsibility on all of us who were elected to the Dáil to govern fairly in the interests of the people. And I think that that is something that the electorate want of us to do regardless of the um, party differences that are clearly represented here in this House. I remember stating at the outset of the 29th Doyle that there should be cooperation among all parties in advancing progressive legislation on which we can all agree. And this is often forgotten in the heat of inter-party rivalry. The Doyle as a whole is elected to legislate and to legislate for the people as a whole. And for that reason, it is important that we set down at the outset that it is essential that all voices in this House are respected and treated equally. That is a critical factor on this first day of the new doll. Now, while I regret uh, the fact that the election has reinforced the dominant position of the two main Conservative parties, Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael, uh, I have to say that it is also evident that the Labour Party, in tying itself so closely to Fine Gael, um, has only facilitated the latter's return here with even uh, greater numbers. And there is clearly no electoral benefit for the Labour Party. The outcome, in my view, has been negative for the broad left in Irish politics. And similarly, the decision of the Green Party to form a coalition with Fianna Fáil and the PDs is a bad day for progressive politics in this state. I believe that the coalition that is presented before us is a, um, an extraordinary coalition, to say the least. And we are particularly concerned that it points to a continuation of many of the most abhorrent policies that the outgoing government pursued and pursued relentlessly, and not least in the whole area of the health portfolio. I believe that the programme for government, as presented now, will see the continuation of the scandalous and disgraceful hospital co-location scheme. And we cannot, we cannot as a party, the Sinn Féin deputies here, support the establishment of a new government that will see Deputy Mary Harney with respect to her on a personal basis as the acting head of the Progressive Democrats return to her ministerial office. 
We don't know as we speak if indeed she will have the health and children portfolio. But I have to say that it is clear that the electorate have spoken and have roundly rejected the malign influence of the Progressive Democrats in the 29th Dáil, and that most particularly represented itself in the pursuit of the policies in the health domain for which she was responsible over the concluding some two to two and a half years. This encouraged inequalities in Irish society and sought to deepen rather than to address and address responsibly the, the growing gulf in Irish society between those who have and those who continue to struggle on a day-by-day -day basis. For these reasons, we cannot support the nomination of Deputy Bertie Ahern for the position of Tisha going into the 30th Dáil. He has not demonstrated over the weeks since the election that he intends to change course in this area and in many other related areas, including the issue of stopovers at Shannon Airport by US forces intent on continuing their imperialist endeavor in Iraq. There are many, many issues that we could address here. Many of the failures of the outgoing government that we see being continued by this new administration under Deputy Bertie Ahern. And so it is with regret that I say that we cannot find uh, it within ourselves to either support his nomination or indeed that of Deputy Enda Kenny, who claims to represent a, an alternative to the outgoing government now emboldened by the Greens and a number of independents. We cannot support another five years of privatisation of our health services while public hospital beds are never delivered, while A&E units throughout our country are being overcrowded and those who are providing critical services are finding it impossible to carry out their work as they would wish. We see MRSA is rampant and the list is endless, it continues. There is nothing in what either nominee before us today presents that will address any of these critical issues. So it is that we will oppose you both and we will continue as a party determined to give a radical voice and a real alternative for the Irish people in this chamber over the coming years, whatever duration this government will last. Goramila uh, Mahigut. Kian Corla, can I begin by congratulating you and your election uh, to the office of Kian Corla? And can I say that um, we will certainly miss your wit and humour around the Cabinet room, but you have been a loyal and committed colleague of mine for the last 10 years, and I want to thank you for that. Uh, I think you are a quintessential uh, Irishman, and uh, you're a very appropriate person to represent this House, and I think the office of Kian Corla is probably not taken as seriously here as it is in many parliaments around the world, and I believe that your legal background will be enormously beneficial uh, in interpreting the rules of this House and keeping order. I rise also to support the nomination of Deputy Bertie Ahern for the Office of Taoiseach, and I do so for the third time in ten years. I do so because I believe he has the capacity to lead a stable, coherent and effective government over the next five years, and because of the unique skills he has uh, to run a coalition government on the basis of mutual respect and partnership. I think the fact that he's about to be elected Taoiseach for the third successive time something that hasn't happened in this House for over 60 years, when the political landscape was very different, is a tribute to his unique personal and political qualities, not least of which was the negotiation of the Good Friday Agreement and its successful implementation, which has transformed politics and life on the island of Ireland. Today is not a day, I think, for uh, robust opposition or uh, indeed heated debate. Edmund Burke once said, magnanimity uh, is, uh, is, is not often the truest wisdom. But today I want to pay tribute in particular uh, to those who are not in this House, in particular many of my colleagues in the Progressive Democrats, because we had a very disappointing election. So to people like Liz O'Donnell, who made a great contribution in many respects to this House for 15 years, to Fiona O'Malley and May Sexton, Tim O'Malley and Tom Parlin, and especially to our leader, Antonis, then former Minister for Justice, which he'll be shortly, Michael McDool. I think he has made a lasting contribution uh, to political history and to the quality of life in Ireland. In particular, 
his strong defence of the rule of law in the peace process, made a major contribution to the health of our democracy and to peace in our society. And I think most fair-minded people recognise that. In paying tribute to them, I want to pay tribute to the many other people who lost their seats uh, from other parties, uh, not least of which was Deputy Jim, uh, Joe Higgins, a fine parliamentarian. We didn't always agree, but I think we'd certainly miss him in this House. And politics can be very cruel on individuals, on their families, on their supporters. Today is a sad day for the many who will watch in, who could have been here, who would have wished to have been here, just as it is a very happy day for the 49 new members of this House. We are entering a new uh, political ecology. I think there's a new organic biosphere uh, <laughs> made up of made up of made up of new uh, interdependent of new interdependent relationships. And and as we know, the whole ecology only works when all forms of human life are cherished and work together. <laughs> and. Uh, I certainly look forward to working uh, with the new Green Party ministers and the government. I strongly believe in collective responsibility and loyalty in government. That's what I've sought to do over the last 10 years and that's what I want to do with our new colleagues in government over the next five years. And notwithstanding the programme for government, which is extremely important, government works week in, week out on the basis of interpersonal relationships where people give and take support and assist each other and that's the kind of loyalty I think that helps to deliver successive and cohesive government. So Kian Korda, the Progressive Democrat deputies, uh, the two Progressive Democrat deputies, I began my speech on the last occasion here by welcoming Deputy Kenny to the Lonely Leaders Club. Uh, today I'm welcoming people to the Interim Leaders Club, of which there's two of us at the moment and maybe there'll be more in due course. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> But can I say, uh, on behalf of Deputy Grealish and I, we are, we are happy to support the nomination of Deputy Bertie O'Hearn for Taoiseach. Deputy Gregory. Good morning, Kian Corley. I'm going to go to the house of 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 the to thank those people in Dublin Central who voted for me and returned me to the 30th Dáil. It is a great honour for all of us to be elected to Dáil Ireland, but it is particularly difficult for an independent candidate to succeed in a general election. And I owe a great deal to a group of people who on a voluntary basis campaigned, canvassed and put up posters and helped me compete with the big political machines. I want today to again thank every one of them for their efforts which made my re-election possible. Yet it is particularly disappointing for me, Cairn Corley, that in my own constituency of Dublin Central, more than 40% of the electorate did not consider it worth their while to vote at all. And of course the percentage of those who did not vote was much higher in the more disadvantaged areas of the constituency. When I spoke here five years ago, I welcomed the many new independent TDs elected at that time, but regrettably almost all of that new group lost out on this occasion. I think it is appropriate to pay tribute to each of them for the committed manner in which they played an important and active role through the technical group in all the deliberations of Dáil Éireann in the outgoing Dáil. But I want to especially pay tribute to the leader of the independent group during those last five years, Joe Higgins, who after 10 years of total and dedicated commitment, bringing the attention of this House to many social injustices, regrettably was not re-elected. This House, I believe, will be a duller place, but more importantly, it will be a less inclusive place without Joe Higgins. But I am certain that his day will come again. On the nomination of Taoiseach, Kian Corley, there has been some speculation in recent weeks in the media as to why I was not involved in talks with one of the nominees before us, Deputy Ahern. Perhaps it was that, as we both share the same constituency, 
Deputy Ahern will have been conscious of the priority issues on which I contested the re recent election. Those issues included the need to end the two-tier health service and the scandal of the exploitation of public hospitals for private profit, the need to control the price of building land, much of it held by a cartel of billionaire developers who have driven house prices beyond the affordability of most of our people, the need to, ta to radically tackle the inequality in education which le sees less than 5% in some of my communities in Dublin Central get their children to third level education, the need to strive for a fairer and more equal society, the need to safeguard our neutrality and sovereignty by ending the shame, the shameful use of Shannon Airport by United States military forces on their way to their murderous and illegal war in Iraq. The need to develop our natural resources to benefit our own people and not at the behest of the multinational oil companies. And the need to ensure that when a person dies in Garda custody or dies of injuries sustained while in Garda custody, that there must be an immediate and independent investigation. These were some of the issues on which I stood for election in Dublin Central. And it is political issues such as these and no other consideration whatever that will dictate the manner in which I will vote on the nomination of Taoiseach. Gormagat Ceann Corley. I congratulate you in a very special way. <laughs> I congratulate you, Count Corla, because I'll, I'll go back. I'll go back over the years, Count Corla, when I directed elections for you in your earlier years, <laughs> and God knows, you know. Uh, I played a leading role in sending you to this house in the very first instance. <laughs> I want to congratulate the Count Court and I wish you many long and happy years in that seat that we're sitting here now. <laughs> I would say too, Count Corla, that, that I am here and clearly state that I am supporting Betty Hernes Tichik, with whom I have a, a wonderful relationship since I was elected to this house in 1997. I now look forward to backing this brand new government comprising of Fianna Fáil, the Green Party, the Progressive Democrats, and my fellow independents. I want to thank in a very special way the massive team of supporters and people that put me into this position in South Kerry up against the might and the massive strength of Fianna Fáil, <laughs> Fianna Gael, and Labour. And I want to guarantee you, Count Corla, that standing on this floor this evening, that if there's a bad pothole around Waterville, <laughs> or a bad one around the, Dur the Dursey Island in West Cork, or in Cahar Saivine anywhere, <laughs> In your absence, I'll do my very best. <laughs> In your absence, I'll do my very best to sort them out and I'll keep you well informed all the time. <laughs> Can I, assure, can, I, can I assure the deputy that I will never be far away? Tarum on Kestachel, the von Ruhn Nadal, I know. I'm required to put the question in accordance with the resolution of the Dáil today. I'm going to ask the Dáil 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 to the Tahti Atar Hev and Tarashkina Abradish Ta. The Tahti Atar in the Rina Abradish Neil. 
Shilam Guil and Kesh Ritter, my order. Tall, 89. Neil, 76. The question is carried. Count Corlea is Kush more all his dumps at Shasif and Chohanu of Scorna Dola Marhishik is more an or on Privlay Douglas and Dulgas at all or him Cartagena for some wind in a heron who's Corfi on Realtis Newish on Con Ibra at the fun of. I express my deep gratitude and appreciation to the doll for the great honours conferred on me by electing me Taoiseach. I'm deeply conscious of the important responsibility uh, this honour places on me. It's my first duty and great pleasure upon being nominated by Dollar Erin by the Office of Taoiseach to congratulate you, Count Corlea, on your election to the House. Uh, your long service as experience as a deputy together with your experience as a minister will equip you well for the important office to which you've been elected as Count Corlea. Deputies from every side of the House can have full confidence that in you we will have a fair and an impartial champion. For my part, I pledge you to respect and the cooperation upon which the effective discharge of our parliamentary business depends. Uh, I wish you well in your new and important position. On the 24th of May, Count Corlea, democracy took its course and the Irish people went to the polls and elected the 30th Dáil. The exercise of democracy as prescribed by the Constitution is fundamental to the stability of our country and to the legitimacy of our government. Uh, to our free, a uh, transparent and peaceful exercise of the democratic franchise is happily the norm. It should never be taken for granted. It is worth remembering today, as we meet for the first time, that Ireland enjoys a longer period of continuity under a single written, con written constitution than any other European country. From a perspective of peace and prosperity, the abiding memory today of the 1920s, the 1930s, the 1940s, may be of economic hardship and emigration, but we should recall too that in a world at war in a European continent oppressed by fascism and communism, that Ireland's proudest achievements then was the establishment of a stable democracy. It remains one of Ireland's proudest achievements now. Ireland's democracy, established with such firm political purpose by those who fought for and who established the Republic, is the foundation for all we enjoy. Today, myself and on behalf of all of those who share the privilege of being elected to the 30th Dáil, I want to acknowledge those who have gone before us and left so much of lasting value behind. Every generation, colleagues, has made its contribution to the unfolding story of Irish history. Today, it is fitting to recall and to salute those who served in the 29th Dáil and who are not here today. Many former deputies stepped down after long years of service. Others suffered the bruising and very public pain of political defeat. All made their own contribution to public life. I salute them, their families, their political supporters, and I wish them well in the future. Today is an occasion of great honour for every deputy who has been elected as a representative of the people. This is especially so for those taking their seat in the Dáil for the first time today. You have come here to Leinster House with your families, with your supporters who are looking down on you from the visitors' gallery with a justified sense of pride in your election. You carry not only high hopes by, from them, but also the high hopes of the community who elected you. You are the ministers and Taoiseach of the future, and in years to come, the turn of events will hinge on your decisions. For myself, I'm greatly honoured to have been elected 10 times in 30 years by the people of Dublin Central. 
I promise that I will continue to do my utmost to repay the trust that has been placed in me and to continue to serve my own community to the very best of my ability. I also count Corley want to pay tribute to my political opponents on the benches opposite. Uh, political battles are hard fought and in a general election is especially so. Deputy Enda Kenny and Deputy Pat Rabbit made their case to the people and they did so with all the strength and passion of people who were genuinely persuaded by their cause. For my part, I respect their convictions, I respect them and today I want to wish them well and their families well in the future. I welcome the opportunity to serve the people in the years ahead with colleagues from the Green Party and the Progressive Democrats, with the support of others who see the merits of our programme. At Count Corlea, we live in an Ireland of unprecedented peace and prosperity. This has not happened by chance. Through every single day of the past decade, the quest for peace has been the single dominating purpose of my public life and of the work of government. Today I pledge again, as I have before, that the cause of peace will be the cause that is always closest to my heart. During these past weeks, attention has understandably been focused in on the course of the general election. In the future, I believe a far greater regard will be taken by history to the new and glad departure in the relations between unionists and nationalists and between North and South on this island. There now exists between British and Irish nationalists and unionists an agreed consensus on our shared future. It's not an end of history, but it is a new beginning. The work of this doll and of the government which I'll shortly nominate is to shape and to strengthen that shared and better future. In doing so, we can begin to put the divisions of the past permanently behind us. All on the island of Ireland, including Northern Ireland, can be a place of peace and a promise. Today, Ireland stands as a strong economy in a global marketplace. We enjoy the full employment, the good wages, the promising opportunities of which the generations that secured their independence and who built their democracy could only dream. Now our opportunity and our duty is to secure our prosperity and to use it to build a better Ireland. By promoting a strong economy, by enabling individual enterprise, by increasing investment in public services, we can continue to build not only a strong economy, but we can build upon the foundations already laid for a stronger and a fairer Ireland. Wealth creation, of course, is not an end in itself. Rather, it's the engine that drives improvements in our social services, giving us the money to increase child benefit, build more playgrounds, sport facilities, deliver pension increases, improve service for children and adults with disabilities and ensure that our strong economy is grounded on a sustainable environment so that together we can all enjoy a sustainable future. A sound economy is the essential bedrock of social progress. It is the foundation for all our ambitions in health, in enterprise, in welfare or education. In a world with higher interest rates, higher energy costs, increasing competition from emerging economies, success cannot be assumed and prosperity cannot be taken for granted. So today, Count Corlea, I pledge that the government I will lead will work to protect prosperity, to strive to ensure that Ireland's potential, all our potential, is achieved. In doing so, I look forward to achieving with the social partners the challenging goals we agreed in towards 2016. I also look forward to leading the public service in a new phase of modernisation and change to the benefit of all our people. On this occasion five years ago, I said that high office does not confer upon it its holder either monopoly of wisdom or the benefit of hindsight. It certainly proved to be so. But I take courage from all the lessons I've learned from life, including my life in politics. I especially take heart that I've learned from experience. The effort is rewarded, and if you stay the course, difficult goals can be reached. At Count Corlea, today I'm honoured and humbled by the democratic mandate with which the Irish people have given me. It's an honour, and I work with my might uh, to repay every day I hold this office. And so it was a great pride and acute sense of responsibility that I accept the nomination of Dáil Éireann for the Office of Taoiseach. Yeah. Thank you.
Well, I'm sure those are the ones who are going to be able to do it. I'm going to be able to do it. Firstly, may I say, sir, that I want to congratulate you on your appointment as Kian uh, Cole of the 30th Dáil. Coming as you do from Cahar Saivín in the Deep South, you bring with you your own, your own um, wonderful tradition uh, in a county in which I have strong associations myself. In fact, you'll now have to develop uh, a little style all of your own, as all your predecessors did. Uh, either by accent or by action. <laughs> I recall asking, um, asking former Minister for Education, Richard Burke, who came from close to the location of uh, former distinguished um, um, uh, Count Corla, Sean Tracy, where they got the accent. And he said, it's the limestone, it sticks in your throat. <laughs> so I'm not sure what your... Um, what your quirk will be uh, after five years. I'd like to say that it's an honour and a privilege uh, to be nominated uh, to contest the position of uh, Taoiseach of the country uh, in this, uh, this Dáil in the House of Parliament. And I want to thank Richard Bruton on behalf of the Fine Gael Party for nominating me uh, and to Pat Rabbit on behalf of the Labour Party uh, for uh, supporting that. I'd like to say to you, Deputy Bertie Hearn, uh, that uh, I congratulate you and give you credit uh, for your persistence and for your permanence uh, in the political field in Ireland. Uh, for you, this is not just an honour. It is one that is almost unprecedented uh, in that only one of your predecessors since the foundation of the state uh, achieved uh, the, uh, the opportunity and the privilege of having served three times uh, as Taoiseach of the country. I suppose we should all be glad for small mercies that you've decided to start the long glide to retirement, uh, uh, as, as you have announced already. Five years ago, uh, standing in this position, um, I said uh, that we would support the government uh, in the interests of the country, where we felt that that was necessary, and that we would oppose the government and hold them to account, where we also felt that was necessary. We've had our jousts in here at leaders' questions and on other occasions and opportunities. Um, but I accept the verdict of the people. I accept the consequences of the proportional representation system. Uh, and I accept the decision of the Dáil uh, today in nominating you and in confirming you uh, as Taoiseach of the country. Five years ago, I actually set out to make you history uh, but I didn't actually quite get there on this occasion. I'd like to say that um, we live in a very different world than we did five years ago, both nationally and internationally. Uh, things have changed uh, on their head, as it were. And circumstances for you, as leader of, of the government that you are to announce, uh, are very different than what they were five years ago, in the sense of the economic challenge that faces the country and the changed national and international circumstances. Um, and I suppose, given your infernal ability uh, to create or construct a government of incompatibles, I have to wish you well uh, in what you do. You mentioned, uh, you mentioned that you'd been elected 10 times over 30 years, and that's true. At least in one respect, I have a slight edge on you uh, in being here 32 years. 11 times, and on this occasion, having had the opportunity to bring back with me uh, 20 new deputies, or re-elected deputies, uh, which for me personally was, uh, was uh, the most enjoyable election campaign that I've ever fought. And I might say this, uh, that to, to see democracy in action in your own constituency uh, gives you an understanding of the way the movement actually is, but to lead a national campaign on behalf of a national party through 43 constituencies really does bring home the impact and the importance of every single vote and how important that is to our democracy. Um, so congratulations to you, Deputy Ahern. Uh, I wish you well in your, uh, your endeavours and in the challenge that faces you. I want to assure you uh, that insofar as this party is concerned uh, with our increased mandate that we sought and were given, uh, we will support the government in the interests of the country where we deem that appropriate and, um, and responsible. And we will continue to hold you and whatever ministers you appoint uh, to account uh, on issues that we feel uh, you should be held to account on. 
I think it was Einstein who said, uh, try not to be a man of success, try also to be a man of value. I hope at the end of your tenure of office that that's what the people will judge you by. Ken Collier, I would uh, like to add my voice and uh, the voice of my party to the congratulations to Deputy Bertie Ahern on being re-elected Taoiseach and to extend our good wishes uh, to him um, in the lifetime of this Thoil. Uh, I, I do so without any cavils or caveats of any kind. Uh, to be re-elected uh, for a third consecutive term uh, is a truly remarkable achievement. And uh, I acknowledge uh, that achievement. Uh, I congratulate the, the Taoiseach for it. It is a, a tribute uh, to his single-minded focus uh, on politics and public service. Uh, I know that later uh, tonight, uh, when, he announces, uh, when he announces the members of his uh, new cabinet, that we will have an opportunity uh, to uh, dwell in a little more depth on the substantive issue, uh, the formation of the new government and the challenges that now lie ahead. But for the purpose of these few remarks, uh, I want to uh, to wish the, the Taoiseach well, uh, to acknowledge that uh, extraordinary achievement, uh, to say that it, it is a reward for his, his single-minded focus on politics. I, I hope you get the opportunity on the way back from the, uh, from the Oris uh, to do a half hour's canvassing in Drumcondra before you, uh, before you return here. Um, but it is, I suppose, a, a tribute uh, to your extraordinary ability to uh, straddle the people of property in our society and the people of no property. Uh, it's a remarkable achievement uh, when examined in political terms. In the new configuration of the Dáil, the, the Labour Party is the undisputed party of the left. Uh, we intend to uh, provide opposition uh, to your government on that basis. We intend to re represent the vacant space where the lobbyists of the Green Party used to recently uh, occupy uh, and to do our best to hold this government to account. But this afternoon is your afternoon, Taoiseach. I don't think anybody in modern times uh, is likely to repeat the achievement of being thrice elected Taoiseach uh, of this country. It's a tremendous honour. <coughs> And to you and to all who care for you, uh, I offer my uh, unstinted congratulations and best wishes. On behalf of the Sinn Féin deputies, I wish to join with the earlier speakers in congratulating Deputy Bertie Ahern on his election as Taoiseach of the 30th Dáil. I would echo again what has been said, that it is a remarkable achievement in the short political life of this state and indeed of Irish politics on the island of Ireland. I wish you well in the period ahead, whatever duration it will be. As I indicated in my earlier remarks to the debate on the selection of Taoiseach on the nomination of both yourself and Deputy Kenny, that it is the responsibility of each and every one of us to play a constructive role, and we're here not in opposition for opposition's sake, but to recognise the merit of proposals from government legislation. We have a record of supporting, as we believe appropriate, as it is a, a required. And I hope that there will be many occasions in the course of the lifetime of the 30th Dáil, when indeed there will be unanimity, or as near as, as is achievable. That will be indicative of a greater care, greater attention, uh, greater consideration of proposals and legislation that will come before this House. And let us hope that the makeup of the new government 
with the myriad of parties and representatives that are now represented there, that there will indeed be a reflection on many of the ideas that people on these benches would care about. I wish you well, um, Deputy O'Hearn, and uh, as has been said, uh, this is a proud moment for you and for your family. And I wish you success in that. Success not on a personal basis alone, or indeed on a party political one, but success for the people of Ireland who are dependent on your stewardship in office. Agus Gwim Cogorgis, Agus Gachra, Aaron Dishach, a Rishd a Tatofa Marhishak Natira Show. A Tisagum Nakrod Nua, eh? Mar is Tishake, La Tamil Fada, Agus Ta, Egardi Gahanava Lesh, um, a Rish and Yuv, um, Insan Roll. A Kurum Kurunche Tus La Re Nua, Eganam Kena, La Turan Volta Show, Mar Kurunche Tus the Roll, Mafarti Hain, on Quintus Glass, uh, La Dol. A go fortiacht a realtus. Agus Kilin Cheshin, Niawain Gor Okoid Starul a Dumsa, um, Go Parsenta, August and Tishach, Marhishach, a realtus no a Marshin, Ak is Okoid Starul a Kuma Mar, is parting with a ta fear of weak, the Uber and Tishach, um, the Ling on Proshesh, Shiachan a Galer, Agus. Uh, Chak de Vime, Conor Enon Kaste, Mar Davorshin, uh, Is Fader, Linga Ara, Sakoentus Glass, Gawilamid Mar Forti, Ille, Aaron, Anish, Mid, Ata, um, Ata Parchach, um, in, in St. Chunnel, a Stormont, Agus and Shaw in all Aaron, Koma, Agus uh, Tom Wiak, Dantishach, Asanobar Shin, Er son Shiachan, the Tirisha, Agus on Roll Ata. A Munchen Natira Illig, a Kirkunkin Natira, Instant Quaintus Glass, O Huig Agus O Yas, Agus Guim Gak Rahair, Asan Obershin, Agus Tomig Sul, Leshon Dulkunkin, Grafaderling, a Yen of the Kayla, Con Sail, Nis Far, a Winter Mach, the Munchen Natira Erfad, Agus Con Tauki Natira Shah, a Lloydru, Leshon Duklan, a Taroin, for a Magiv. Gramago Tansia Fionri, Gadi Lahur Thresh, Shade of Unruin Nadala in Yogi.